Hi everybody, this is Corey Beeg, and this is a quick tutorial on Midjourney AI. Midjourney is a text-to-image artificial intelligence platform, which means a user, like you, types in what they call a prompt, which is basically a, a string of text describing the kind of image that you want to create. And these images can range any, anywhere from uh, graphic design to product design to architecture to art. Uh, and it uh, essentially takes the text that you write and pairs that with images from its database, which includes millions, if not billions, of different images. It's scraped from the web and tagged uh, with different features, different parameters of those images. So if you want a house that's in the shape of dinosaur fossils, you type that. Uh, it knows what houses look like based on its database, and then it starts to replace elements of that with fossils. Because it's using images that are, are already tagged, it knows that houses typically have windows or doors, so it automatically includes that, that kind of information in the construction of the image. Um, it's a diffusion-based model, so it essentially begins with a random uh, field of noise, of dots, and then it constructs the image from that field, adding articulation along the way according to the different images it starts to pair with your text uh, from online. So when you sign up, you come to this site, Midjourney. It used to be closed beta, but now it's um, open beta, so you can join beta, and uh, the website is midjourney.com. Um, if you've already signed in, you'll have a profile online. These are all the different images I've made, and it will include a gallery of everything you've made, which you can tag, you know, your favorite images, oldest images. You can sort this through different ways. Um, your favorite prompt words start to appear up here. Uh, there's other users, um, and then you can also go into their their useful website, which includes documentation on how to use it. It's very easy to use. There's really no skill involved. Um, I think you'll start to find that different uh, prompts start to produce different kinds of effects. And what's nice is when you join Midjourney, you'll see what other people are doing, so you can start to learn from others. Uh, the most, most important stuff in here is the user manual. This is how you begin to create a prompt. You type backslash imagine or forward slash imagine, uh, and then you type whatever you want. Um, you, there are some other features you can start to add. So you could just type forward slash, slash imagine a house made of dinosaur fossils and it would start to produce that. But you can also add more information. So if you want a very specific width of an image, you can type slash slash w, the width. So slash slash 128, for example. Um, you can change the seed. This is all random because there are billions of images online that it's pulling from. You know, it's going to take house number 500 on one iteration, house number 2000 on another. So no image will ever be the same, even if you use the exact same prompt. So seed can start to limit that. You can say always do seed number five, and you can start to control a little bit more of that randomness if you use that value. Um, sometimes you want it to exclude things. So uh, uh, slash slash no, no plants, for example, would try to remove plants. Uh, a popular one is slash slash no DOF, depth of field. So if you don't want any blurry parts of your image, you can say no DOF, which would be depth of field. Uh, this is also really useful. You can use images from online or images that you want to begin with. It sort of uses them. It doesn't really use them uh, except for you know color or style. Uh, but if you do use an image, you can do uh, dash dash IW, which means image weight, and you can set it. So the default is 0.25, which is pretty low. You can go to two. Um, I've read some places that five makes the best uh, use of the image, so it actually uses more of the image. Uh, but on their literature, it says two's the max, but you know, you could throw in different numbers, see what it does. You can also use negative values if you want it to use very little of the image. Um, when you start using this, there's, there's two modes of working. There's fast and relax. Uh, relax means it's not charging you metered hours. So if you have a subscription of a certain number of GPU, uh, usage per month, you might run out of that pretty quickly, in which case it'll bump you to relaxed, so it no longer, it wouldn't charge you past that subscription fee. Fast though, of course, works very quickly, so if you want to iterate very quickly, you have to be on fast. Um, and then there's some other ones. Aspect I use quite a bit, so if I want an aspect ratio of 69, which is wide angle, for example, you can do dash dash aspect 16 colon 9, and that will always produce that, that frame. Um, and then some other things. So I, I highly recommend going through here and looking at that. Um, and uh, just really quickly to talk about how to use an image. One useful way is you, if you have an FTP site, you can just upload the image. 
Uh, but you can also go onto websites. This is my website here. Let's say I want to use uh, you know this image to start. Um, one thing you can do is select, go to a website, select, right click on the page and say view page source. And you can actually find that image on here. So for example, if I'm looking down here, I'm looking for JPEGs or PNGs or whatever the file type for that particular one is. And you can see here they are here. So uh, these are the images. So I can select this as my HTTPS, HTTPS web address, copy that. The key to using an image, if you want to use an image in your prompt, is that it must end in something like .jpg or .png. It can't just be an HTML link. It won't work. So you have to make sure it's a link that ends in a file format that it can read, an image file format. That's the main key. All right, so once you're in there, uh, this is what the user interface looks like. It works through a platform called Discord. So you don't actually run it on their website. It's a, this is a kind of a chat room. And um, the public chat room looks like this. And you'll enter in as a um, new user into one of these newbie channels. You'll go in here. You can see what other people are working on. It's very open. So you know what other people have used for prompts, for example who made the, the image. I can actually go in here and make variations of someone else's art that they're working on. Um, but basically you just have this, this link down here where you can start to type um, what your prompt is going to be. Uh, I'm gonna go into my channel, which is up here, uh, and start typing. So let's go ahead and begin. All you have to do is type forward slash imagine and then start typing the different um, things that you want. So I recommend there's a, you'll start to learn different strategies and figure out different things along the way. I, I'm an architect, so I always start with buildings. And if you're doing an interior, you might say an interior hotel lobby. Um, if I want an exterior view, I'm going to say buildings. If I want something that's more the size of a house, I'll start with a house. But let's make this a little bigger. So I'm gonna say three buildings. I wanna imagine three buildings. Um, and let's say they're made out of um, stacked blocks um, with wood carved inlays. And, and this can be as, as crazy as you want to be. It could be dinosaur fossils, or it could be an actual, you know, realistic building out of metal corrugations or wood slats, really up to you. Um, if you wanted to make it in the style of someone, uh, you could do that. You could say in the style of Frank Gehry. Uh, one thing I would say though is more common names don't tend to work as well. So Frank, for example, there's a lot of Franks out there. It might be confused with hot dog Franks. Um, so you have to be, you know, a word like Zaha Hadid, for example, is very um, uh, clearly going to bring up those archi that architect's imagery. But if it's a more common name like Richard Foster, for example, it might sometimes succeed, sometimes not. So that's something to keep in mind. You could say though, uh, in the style of an architect, or you could say in the style, uh, the style of let's say Chuck Close, for example. So we'll see what three buildings made of stack blocks in the style of Chuck Close uh, is. Um, what I like to do is figure out the kind of view I'm looking for. So in this case, uh, you know, you could choose like isometric view or front elevation, but I'm going to type in perspective, perspective view, uh, and then say I, in the foreground, I'll say, um, let's see, street in the foreground. And in the background, let's say distant city in the background. So again, you don't need to say all this stuff. It'll fill in the blanks if you don't, but if you want a little more control, you can add a little more detail and information to help help it create a scene that best re represents the, the description that you're giving it. So distant city in the background, maybe I'll say plants because I want some plants to be in this. Um, and then you'll often see people say things like realistic. Like I, you can say abstract or you know different kind of styles. I'll say uh, realistic. Some people add photorealism. Uh, some people add a kind of render style. So you'll see often like octane render or V-Ray render. And you can type in multiple, it's okay. And it will find images that have that kind of stylistic tendency to them. 
Um, it sometimes ignores parts of your prompt, so it tries its best to, to achieve them, but sometimes it ignores them. Um, one thing you can do is you can, uh, you know, I'm just using commas, which are kind of loose, loosely breaking this up into different uh, parameters, different keywords, but sometimes you can really say, I really want to have this in the image. So I could say gold leaf, for example, and if you really want that to be strongly represented in the image, you can use two colons and then a weight. So for example, gold leaf two means like really use this. One would be kind of the you know baseline. Two means really use that. Um, so there's two there's different ways of writing these prompts. You can use uh, you know uh, just commas or you can use these colons and and just try and see what works. Um, other things I've seen people do is things like 4K. I don't know if it actually makes any difference whatsoever, but it doesn't hurt. Uh, and then finally, I always like to use the the dashes. So aspect. Let's do um, 16.9 and let's do no depth of field. So I think that's a pretty good prompt. We can start there. Again, you can test this, add more, add less. Uh, but when you're ready, you just hit enter. Um, it'll then crank away until it gives you um, four images based on those parameters. So you can see, you know, um, gives you four very different images. These are different seeds, uh, different iterations of that prompt. And now you have an option to either upscale, so add resolution, add um, size to each of these images, and it will add detail as it upscales, or you can vary them. So you could say, you know, I like this one, but not quite, so let's do four versions of this and see what it gives me back. Or if you're not happy with any of them, you can hit this and rerun that particular prompt. So let's go in here and let's try to see what happens if we upscale number four. And while I'm at it, I'll also do some variations of number two. Okay, so you can see it gave me four variations of that one image. Um, you can always click on these to see them a little bit bigger, um, see which ones you prefer. Uh, and then this is the upscaled one. So you can see it added quite a bit of detail. One thing I'll point out is that it, if it doesn't capture something in your, your prompt, it might later. So sometimes as you're moving through this, as you're iterating, as you're adding variations, sometimes elements will start to find their way back into it. So even if it's missing some things here, it might start to pick it up. You know, it's not really getting the chuck close. I, I did gold leaf uh, with a heavy weight here. So you could see that's obviously coming through. If I had maybe increased the weight on that, then that would be more dominant. So you can really adjust and change the parameters of these depending on what you're looking for. So once you've upscaled an image, you have a few options. You can do variations of that image. You can upscale it again even further, which will make the size larger larger and add more detail. Uh, one thing to note is you can only do that in fast mode, so not in relax mode. You can also light upscale redo, which doesn't that increases the scale without adding too much detail. So it's more similar to the original image. Um, upscale to the max might change things a little bit that you might not be happy with. So you can also light upscale redo. So let's go ahead and I'm gonna go ahead and go through a series of variations and upscaling until I find an image that I'm happy with. So I'll pause it because that might take me a little while and then we'll see what I come up with. Okay, so I finished running a bunch of upscaling and variations and now you can see the difference between the different seeds and the different outcomes from depending on which seed you choose to move forward with. So, you know, on this one, you can see some of the, maybe the Chuck Close attributes showing up on that elevation. Um, you get the foreground street, you get city in the distance and some gold leaf. Notice I'm only getting really two buildings, so it's dropping some of the parameters out in this particular line. Um, and other ones, it picks up more of them. You know, this one also only two buildings, but quite a different iteration. Um, again, street in the foreground, gold leaf, you get some of the stacked uh, blocks, wood carving, maybe a little less of the Chuck Close in this one. Um, and this one, uh, I think is maybe the most interesting. Um, lots of stacked blocks, so really picked up on that. Uh, maybe one building, uh, mega building, definitely a different scale, very different um, feel to that one. And then this one may be similar, but a smaller iteration. So you can see just based on your choices, which ones you decide to move forward with, which ones you decide to upscale, you can go on trajectories or paths that really have um, various or, or varying end points, so very uh, different variations of the, the project. And if you know, you're know you not quite happy with this, you can go in here and copy the prompt, add something else. Maybe you don't want the gold leaf, maybe you want it to be color pixelation or intense colors or bright colors, fluorescent colors. You can change that parameter 
um, and then rerun the prompt and get even more variations from it. Just a few last things I want to say um, down here in the area where you type in imagine, there's all these other things you can type. So info, for example, will tell you how many um, uh, images you've created, how many you have left with your subscription or in fast mode before it will move you into relax mode. You can switch between fast and relax. So if, uh, again, relax doesn't charge you time, GPU time, if you've already run out over your prescription lim subscription limit. Um, so if you want to change that, you can do that by just typing in forward slash um, fast or relax. And then again, imagine is how you actually run something. But there's a lot of different things, help, uh, invite, uh, when it was in closed beta, beta, you could invite, get an invite link that you could send to three people a month. That's changed now. Um, but all this different stuff, public, private. If you have a uh, an, an account with a higher subscription, you can do private mode. Public means everyone can see what you're typing. Private means you're in your own channel. Um, if you want to change your subscription from monthly to corporate or to uh, the free model, you can change it by following the subscribe link. So all of that's located here. Um, there's a lot more options. So this is just a really basic tutorial, but I hope you have fun with it, and I can't wait to see what everyone makes.